Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for this video. This comes as a request. Someone said, can you give us some ideas and just some techniques on how to use cream and liquid shadows? Because there are some great cream and liquid eyeshadows on the market these days. How do you work them into a look? And so that's what I really want to show you in this video. It's going to be a pretty easy, you know, basic tutorial. And then at the end, I want to give you a few recommendations of some cream and liquid shadows that work really well. And in terms of working well, I I think there are two big factors here. You want it to be pigmented, beautiful shade selection, but also you want something that's going to set and be super long wearing. There are plenty of cream shadows that have come out over the years that have not been that way. But then more recently, I think so many brands are putting things out where, you know, you swatch them once on your hand, you rub over them, they go nowhere. That's a more common thing that you can actually find throughout the drugstore these days too. But if you're working with that kind of a shadow, this look can be very easy to achieve. So I'll be showing you how to use your powder shadows to get like a really blended nice softness in your crease and then two ways to work in your cream shadows and I think you could think of what I'm doing in this video sort of as a template definitely plug in any shades you want different products that you know you like but maybe this will end up being kind of a go-to strategy when you're working with these kinds of cream shadows and if you're just sitting here thinking why creams why can't I just use my powders powders are great all around as well and I use a lot of powder shadows but a couple of great advantages to using creams is that if you've got the right ones, they can be so, so pigmented and vibrant, but also they're offering you, in many cases, heightened staying power beyond what you might get with powder shadows. Only problem has been, I think that many people see them as more of a pain in the butt to work with, but it can be very easy, and that's what I'm gonna show you now. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is prime the lids with eyeshadow primer, and even though some cream shadows that you work with are just super long wearing, and they may not even require any sort of primer underneath, um, I am going to be working with some powder shadows as well to develop the whole look so I do want this on there first. And then I'm going with a matte eyeshadow palette here. This is the Baked Browns from Dose of Colors. I just love this color scheme. It ends up being a very warm look by the way if you use this palette just all on its own. And it's going to be kind of warm today too. I'm going to go for this middle shade with my E25 brush and we just want to work a color into the crease. It wouldn't have to be um, this color tone of course you could use any shadow color you want and it doesn't even have to be fully matte like satin finishes can still operate nicely in this way as well but you just want something to get yourself that softness going in the crease because while cream shadows can be used in the crease I think it's a little more foolproof to put a powder shadow there because the blendability is just really really simple here so again just getting that color right into the crease blending it up as much as you can or as much as you want to. We all have varying amounts of space between our eye and our eyebrow. And then just take a bare brush and really make an effort to buff out the outer edge of the color. And then I want to do a highlight and for that I'm also going to use powder shadow as well. I'm just going to use that color right there and just buff that right over the edge. And this also helps to make a very finished um, edge, so to speak, to the uh, other shadow you've applied. Edge is really the wrong word to use. We're trying to create a total lack of edge, actually. Just a blend, I guess. So now we've got a nice soft crease working there, and I'm ready to pull in a cream shadow. So for this look, I'm using Aqua Aura from the L'Oreal Infallible Paints line. This has kind of a satin finish peach, and then this super pretty matte teal. So I'm going to go to this color first, and it doesn't take a lot of these, you might find, if you've uh, experimented with these as well. I put a little dot of it there on the lid and you want to uh, kind of start blending it out right away because these are cream shadows that have a tendency of setting. So um, just take advantage of the fact that it's been freshly applied, it's nice and creamy, and just blend it all across the lid. This is my Real Techniques shading brush, and I think it works great with um, cream shadows. And if you want to build up the color just a little bit more, add a couple more dots, but just go little by little. Don't overwhelm your lid with a ton of product because odds are it just doesn't need that much. So that shade is now all over the lids, and because the staying power with these is so good, I'm not going to be worried about that fading off or smudging away. This is a great strategy for locked in staying power. Then what I want to do is take that same brush that I used for the crease color. I'm not going to add any more product to it, but I am just going to 
blend over my crease a little bit and I think this just softens that line between the lid shadow and what's already been applied to the crease. Now if you want a really distinct cut crease don't go back and do this. I mean you could definitely use these cream shadows to create that very defined line between your crease and your lid but uh, for everyday wear and just the look that I go for I like it a little softer so just go back in with that same brush and that's enough I think to soften it up. Then you also have the option of layering a little bit of powder on top of your cream if you want to. So the next step I would do is take a slightly deeper shade. So here's like a dark brown, a nice kind of rusty warm color here. I'm going to use a combination of both of those and pat this on the outer part of my lid just to kind of demonstrate to you that you can, you know, overlap powders on top of creams like this. And when you add just a little bit extra in this way, it makes it look less like you've just slapped, you know, one solid shade on your lid and it just integrates it into your look a little bit better. Next, since this is a look where I'm going to be using um, a liner on my upper lash line, I'm going to go ahead and do that now before I move on to the lower lash line. This is my Jordana Color Envy in Black Envy. Now also because I got very little sleep last night, I'm going to brighten my lower inner rim with my Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlighter. This really perks up that area nicely. And then the second sort of cream shadow strategy that I want to demo today is using it as a pop on the lower lash line. You could also use some of these um, cream shadows that have a very kind of liquidy quality to them easily as liner across the upper lash line too, but just basic lower lash line pop. I like to take out this wand applicator or picture yourself dabbing into a little pot if that's the style of cream shadow you're using. But I just get a little bit of this on on an angled brush and you will find this transfers so easily. You feel like you're working with just the perfect consistency of product here because it's not even as stiff as some gel liners are but it's not as liquidy as a straight up liquid liner. This is such a nice consistency to work with. And you just apply it straight to the lower lash line. The intensity is there so I don't feel like I need to add powder for that reason but I also don't feel the need to layer powder on top of this for staying power either because it's going to be very locked in and long wearing just as is. And I'm using very little product. It's literally just dabbing a tiny bit off of that wand and boom, you've got this really pretty um, pronounced lower lash line. I love that. So next, just to finish the look, you're going to curl your lashes, apply mascara top and bottom, add a little false lash if you want to, and that's the look. Finished look, um, something I'm very happy with. I think it looks really nice just in terms of blending and the way everything comes together, but it's also nice to go into your day knowing that you've got something that has a staying power that can take you, you know, into nighttime if it needs to. I like having a lower lash line that I'm not going to be worried about smudging. And it was really such a one step thing, but yet the intensity is totally there. But again, the key to making this whole look work and really give you that great longevity throughout the day is to use cream shadows that set to a long wearing state. They're not going to be transferring up, you know, onto your uh, brow bone or down under your eye. You need to use products you can count on in that way. So in addition to the L'Oreal Infallible Paints, which I think are great, they're such an easy consistency to work with and blend with a brush. Really interesting color options. Some are more monochromatic in terms of the two shades that they give you. Others like this give you some contrasting colors. Another great liquidy type eyeshadow from the drugstore that makes a great lid pop are the Maybelline Color Tattoo Eye Chromes. They also have some deeper shades that you can easily use as liner like I did today. And then there are tons of great eyeshadow sticks in all products price ranges that can do this type of job. Um, Jordana made to last shadow sticks. The Milani shadow eyes are another great creamy option. I love the uh, Mali Evercolor shadow sticks or shadow stick extras as they might be called now. There are some gorgeous neutral kind of shimmery tones in that line. The Balm makes some great shadow sticks called Batter Up. Also the Laura Mercier caviar sticks which are now not only in shimmery finishes but also mattes. Those can be fun to work with. And there's even more than what I've just named there but hopefully that gives you some ideas of the kinds of things that I'm talking about. Shadow sticks that truly set cannot be smudged away. And yeah, I hope this was helpful, you guys. And if you've got other like little tips and tricks, maybe things that I've mentioned briefly in videos, but you'd like me to go more in depth on exactly how to do it. You guys know I'm not calling myself some super expert here, but you know, you do enough makeup application, you do come away with some tips and tricks here and there that I think are worth sharing. So thank you again for your time and I will see you soon. Bye.